Good morning. My name is Mike Lawton and it's my privilege to bring you a reflection from Christchurch. Now, of course, Christmas is finished and the decorations have come down. But I was reflecting on this. There are 12 days of Christmas. And the miracle, obviously, of the birth of Jesus and the various things that happened, they have been spoken of by others during this period. But I want to concentrate on another miracle. God created the constellations. And in the east, something was happening. There was a star that was moving and three wise men, they studied the stars. And to them, it indicated that there was something very special that was happening in the world. And often it relates to a king, the birth of a king. And so they decided to follow it. It's outlined in Matthew chapter two, the three wise men. And we all know the story of it, of what they did and what they brought. Anyhow, this star brought them to Jerusalem and they went to visit King Herod because he was the king of the Jews. And they said to him about this miraculous thing that seemed to be indicated of another king being born. <clears throat> and he was actually jealous and he didn't want this other king to live. But nonetheless, he didn't... Um, he didn't portray that to these three wise men. He said to them, when you have found him, come back and tell me where he is so that I too may go and worship him. Now the Pharisees and Sadducees were consulted and they said in the scriptures, it indicates that Bethlehem is a place where this would be happening. The star shows them the way to Bethlehem. Now it was after all the events that we know of Christmas Day and the shepherds, because the scriptures show that he was now in a house. And later on, you'll find that Herod decided that he would kill children under the age of two. So any time within that period, that is the time we're talking about. The three wise men came and visited Jesus, and they worshipped him. And they gave him three gifts, gold, which is a gift that you give to kings, frankincense, which you give is God, is deity, is worship, and myrrh. Now that's interesting because that is something that you give as an anointing to a dying person. The three aspects of Jesus, he came into the world, he's God, man, yes, we worship him. And he came to die. Now the three wise men then had visited Jesus and they wanted to return to the east, but they were visited and they were told to go a different way. And so they didn't go to, to Herod and, and they went a different way. And Herod realized that they weren't coming and that is why he sent his soldiers to, to kill all the children up in Bethlehem, who were under two, because he thought that would cover this child who's just been born. And as it was, there was a visitation to Joseph too, and he took Mary to Egypt. So, of course, Herod's plans were frustrated. Now, I want to think about this further, because they gave gold, which can be for us money or whatever. And there is a wonderful him, my favourite actually, in the bleak midwinter. And the last verse is, what can I give him, poor as I am? If I was a shepherd, I would give a lamb. If I was a wise man, I'd play my part. What can I give him? Give my heart. Now, we may be able to give him money. We may be able to give him um, wisdom. We may be able to give him wonderful service. That's truly wonderful. But what he really, really wants is our heart. And so I think it's a good thing at this time of year for each of us just to renew our commitment to Jesus. Because throughout the year, things happen. And God elsewhere in the scriptures says that he will restore the years that the locusts have eaten. Maybe in your life, you've lost your sparkle or whatever, and, and you just want a new impetus Ask the Lord, let his Holy Spirit freshen you.
And there's something else the disciples did. Now, the disciples were not Pharisees or Sadducees, but they were not unreligious people. They, they weren't used to, as the Jews worshipped God, and they prayed. But they saw in Jesus something different, such that they were humble enough to say to Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. And I would suggest to you that that is something that you and I can do. It doesn't matter how many years we have been a Christian. We know in our prayer life we get answered prayers, we get unanswered prayers. We don't always understand everything about it. But we can ask the Lord, teach us to pray. And he will teach us to pray in ways that we may find absolutely amazing. We can commit ourselves to the Lord again afresh as to what we're doing and where we're going. And that is what he wants. He wants us to remember him, to worship him, to praise him and teach us to pray. And indeed, sometimes when we pray, it, we think, oh, wow, this is, this is really a big prayer. I'm not sure about this. Maybe you don't think that, but some people do. And it's not a bad idea to say, as one person in the Bible did, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. And the Lord loves that because we are then being honest. It's good to be honest with God. Keep the prayers simple. Keep them real as to how we feel. But keep it up. Now, I would leave that with you, that we can recommit our lives to the Lord. We can come to him afresh and we can start anew this coming year. May God bless each one of you. Shall we pray? Lord, I thank you that you are there to revive and refresh us. Lord. We thank you that three wise men visited you and gave you gifts. But nonetheless, Lord, the gifts they gave you were far far more valuable than perhaps than, than we have, but we can give you our heart and we know that that is what you want. And so revive and refresh us, us this, this day, Lord, and teach us to pray, Lord, as you would pray and keep us ever focused on you, going onward with you at this time, Lord. And we ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the song I'd like to leave with you is Jesus is Lord. God bless you and have a good week.